Hi, I'm Gary Kopp. I'm here with your Lansing legislator, Pete Lucido, and uh, we're going to do another half hour show. And uh, hopefully the, the folks in Shelby are uh, getting something out of this thing. Pete, we want to go back. You've been in Lansing now about, what, six months? Six months. Give us the download on how it's been. What do you think about the job? Uh, how busy are you? Okay. Um, it's a new beginning. It's a new adventure. And um, being in private practice as an attorney, I had day-to-day discussions with families and businesses as it relates to issues. Mm -hmm. And those could, could be almost anything. It could be a domestic matter in the home. It could be a matter regarding a criminal matter. It could be a ins issue regarding somebody's business and how their business needs to help to uh, insulate them from personal liability or whatever it may be. In the law, there's real estate questions, there's domestic questions, criminal questions, there's injury questions, somebody in a car accident. I find myself doing a broader spectrum as it relates to the community. And because I serve as a customer service representative, I think a state representative does a great job being a customer service representative because their customers are their constituents that have in the community. There's roughly 90,000. I represent almost um, all of Shelby, except for a small portion. Mm -hmm all of Washington Township, all of Bruce Township, and the Village of Romeo. Mm -hmm. That is my customer service base. And what I want the viewers to know out there, Gary, is that they have at their disposal my phone number, my email address. At the Capitol is where I do my business. However, I do my business in the community. I'm here on a Monday and a Friday when the House is not in session to take customer service complaints, to take customer services recommendations back to Lansing when I'm there. So what I found is it's an extension of what my practice was now on a grander scale because I'm representing four communities that all have individual identifiable needs and wants. I also have the senior citizens, I have the veterans, I have the farming community in the north end of the town. I have the little people, the children. Mm. I have the educational. I have the business. So the scope has enlarged itself, but the best practice is to go ahead and learn from what I've learned as a lawyer for almost 30 years. Wow. Well, have, I know now that you've got I'm going to hold this up so everybody can see this. You now have summer hours. Summer hours. Uh, hopefully you can uh, get a shot of this. There we go. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Summer hours. Now let's talk about that. Now it says Wednesday, July 1st. That was today, by the way. That's right. Uh, 9 to 10.30, you were here at the Shelby Center. Shelby Township Senior Center right mm -hmm. here. And uh, it was great. Um, the reason why I have summer hours, to give it a backdrop, is as follows. The house is on a break from voting, from taking up bills. Literally, we've already had five and a half, six, almost six months now of going through day-to-day -day operations of bills that were supposed to be taken up in the last legislative processing in 2015, uh, close of the year end 14, that had to come up in 15 now, as well as new bills that were taken up to modify, change, and implement law. As a result, that summertime is for me to be in the district, as I am now, to go ahead and come into the community on a day-to-day, -day, week to week, until we go ahead and reignite back at the state house. So Wednesday, July 1st, today, here at the Shelby Township Senior Center. Then I move next week on Wednesday up to Washington Township, and I'm there on July 8th. So I try to make it easy for the customers to see that Wednesday, 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 1st, 8th, 15th, and I'm floating from the south end, which is of, of the district, all the way to the north end. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing that? I'm making it easier for the customer. I'm making it convenient if they missed one week because they couldn't get there. Go the next week on a Wednesday. It's the same time, 9 to 10.30, and I will be able to answer your questions, help facilitate any phone calls that I need to make up to the Capitol, that's why I started at 9. And also be able to get information back to you 
and make it easy that if I need to get the information from the, the, the state, I can have it back the next week right there to you. That's what a good representative does is give good customer service. I have not seen this before. What, uh, what's the motivation? Why are you doing all this? When you start to talk to people, this community has an ever uh, evolving need. We have seniors that have to get their benefits and services. We have veterans that have the same need for benefits and services. We have moms and dads that are concerned about the future of their children. And I said, from the campaign forward, the families are coming first. If we don't have the families intact, nothing really matters after. Mm. So this is how I believe this job should be approached. I'm taking it in a very um, positive, but more importantly, straightforward approach. Tell me what you need from me. I will deliver what I need to do up at the Capitol for you. This community itself has needs too. Mm -hmm. And as a result, our local governments do a great job, not a good job, a great job taking care of what it is this community needs. But when it looks upon the state to help the local government, I have to be the go-to guy up in Lansing. And that's what I'm doing. Good. Well, one other thing that, uh, that you're, you're doing, and I guess maybe all the other representatives do it also, I don't know, but particularly you're doing, if somebody wants to come up and pay a visit to you, what kind of arrangements can they make in order to come up and see you at the Capitol? It's simple. It really is. I have a phone number called 1-888-MICH-REP, R-E-P. And that phone number, you just pick up the phone, give me a call, tell me when you're coming up to the Capitol. Tell me what your visit is, if it's going to be students, if it's going to be seniors, you know, like the lunch bunch wants to come up to the Capitol and spend the day looking at the history of the Capitol, uh, familiarizing themselves with what the Capitol does and how they perform in regards to customer service and looking at the state house and the function of the state house and the senate my opinion is there's a very good grassroots basis for coming up and it's this unless you know what your government does you really can't be a good proponent of your government mm -hmm. so i want people to know we drop bills we vote on things it becomes law but the process how it's done is all in the state capitol. Okay, we're going to continue on with this discussion here in a second. But right now, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Every student needs encouragement to finish high school. Go to BoostUp.org to give Reagan and the students in your community the boost they need to make it through. Welcome back. I'm Gary Kopp, and again, I'm here with your Lansing legislator, Pete Lucido. Uh, Pete, we wanted to finish up before the break. We were talking about tours and things like that that you can do in Lansing. Uh, you talked about the phone number, 888-MICHREP. That's M-I-C-H-R-E-P. So that'll get directly to your office? Right to the office. Okay. It rings right into our office. Perfect. Okay. And then if somebody else wants to get you, let's say they don't want to call you and they want to do the Internet thing, how do they get a hold of you there? You know what? People are busy, no doubt about it. They have uh, families on the go as well as some of them may be homebound, which means they can't get out. Mm -hmm. I have a website. The website is there. It's uh, peterjlacido.com. And I have an email. Hmm. And on my website, peterjlacido.com, you can also go and get to the email, which is peterlucido at house.mi.gov. Okay. If you go ahead and need to email me, we will get back to you. Sometimes it might not be 24 hours, it may be 48, <laughs> but we will send you a notice that we did receive your email and we are communicating back to you by email. And it's a great idea that you put the questions if you do in writing, if you have them. If we have to get you to a service that the state provides, we will give you the phone number. If we're not sure that you live in our district, because I'm getting some from other districts, Livonia, <laughs> Livonia, a little out of my district, <laughs> but we'll be more than courteous to give you mm -hmm. the name of your rep and to go forward and tell you this is their phone number. Last but not least, if you are coming to the Capitol, let's say it's with the school, 
and that's not mm -hmm. going to happen during the summer. But let's assume you bring your family up, make it a day trip, what's called an educational trip for your family during the summer. I'll be more than happy to go ahead and take the time to bring you down on the floor, and only a representative that chaperone with the family can go down on the floor yeah. and bring them in the state capitol okay. in regards to seeing the state house. They can tour the entire capitol but for going to the state house or going into the senate. Mm. One more thing. We have summer reading program going on. And reading does rock with the, all of the school kids. Mm -hmm. I want those students to get charged up for the summer. We have a reading program that is out there and whoever wins by way of your you're counting the books, you're recording the books on the back of the bookmarks I have in the library. We're going to draw a winner and they could be state rep for the day. Wow. So, I so want it doesn't take much to be a state. No, I didn't <laughs> mean to say that. <laughs> I want them to go to the library. They'll see the display set up in the local libraries around our town here in Shelby Township. And uh, there's one up in Washington, one in Romeo and Bruce. And they have a display that says if you're reading a book, you just diary and document what book you read. You record it, and when you get 10 of them, you go into a drawing. Hmm. We're going to draw out a winner, and they can come up to the state capitol and be a state rep for the day. Wow. So I, I'm assuming there's information here at the Shelby Library as there well is. as in uh, Romeo District also. Yes. Perfect. So all the kids can read books and become a state rep for a day. And let's not forget, be more educated. Be more educated. Well, once they learn how the things work up in Lansing, they may not want to be anymore. <laughs> but uh, So they can book a tour. Yep. They can book uh, uh, some time on the floor. They can actually get on the, the representative floor and see how this whole thing works. You know what, I, cool. I, and I really do enjoy, especially the young students, I enjoy listening to them and the dialogue they bring back to me. It's so intriguing to see what their already knowledge is, mm. but also the scope of their knowledge as to how a representative who makes a bill and puts it in, they do understand the process, mm. as well as how it becomes signed into law and the three branches. The legislative, the executive, which is our governor, and the judiciary, which is our Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. All these three branches work independently, but all have to respect and honor that which is our democracy. Yeah. Good for them. All right, now I've also got something that uh, hopefully all the uh, constituents here have gotten their hands on. It's called the Lacedo Capital Report. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on with that? Well, I plan on keeping you, the viewers, and the, uh, the people that live in the district very much so informed. Um, you will see a newsletter come out as it relates to what I've been doing up in the Capitol, mm -hmm. what I've been doing in regards to in our community, in our, in our, in our district. It also has areas of festivals, fairs, and events that are local to not only our local community here in the district, but also our surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. So if it's not far for your, you or your family to travel, even if it takes you out of the district, I want you to know what's going on in Sterling Heights or St. Clair Shores, parts of uh, Livonia, if, if that's not too far, Mount Clemens. And I wanted them to take that opportunity if they don't know what to do that day, there's something on the calendar for them. And of course, I also have given you what I have done legislatively up in Lansing, the bills that I've put out, the bills that have gone through the House already that are in the Senate or going to the governor's desk for signature, wow. which is making law. You've actually done something? Oh. Isn't that a first? <laughs> well, that's terrific. So this, this is getting mailed to everybody's home? That's already been mailed. Okay. You can catch it on the website, peterjlacido.com, okay. or I've also posted it on Facebook. So if you haven't been friends with me on Facebook, go on to Peter J. Lacido, your Lansing legislator, or Peter J. Lacido, and that's my individual Facebook. I mm -hmm. put it all out there, and here's the reason why. I believe in open government. I believe in telling the people exactly what I'm doing every step of the way. Beautiful. So one of the things that uh, I know you've talked about this before, but maybe for the people that are out there that, uh, that haven't gotten this yet or maybe won't understand it, this emergency contact information, now you had something to do with putting that on the driver's licenses. What is that all about? You know what, uh, Gary? I have a father who's 92 and my mom's 87. And, um, and I know that there's a lot of families out there that have um, older parents or grandparents. In regards to making sure that they're safe or even a loved one, my wife, my children, I want them to be able to put the name, address, phone number in an encrypted 
way that means that no one can see it with their personal emergency contact on the back of a driver's license. So the first response, the police or fire, can go ahead and swipe it through their reader, tell that person immediately there's been an accident or we oh. found this person if they have Alzheimer's or dementia. That's the kind of stuff that makes, I think, good law and it is, let's face it, it's bipartisan. Yeah. It's not a party, it's yeah, about it's the people. people. Sure. One more thing, and I know we're gonna go to break soon. I wanted this done before we took the break. It got passed out of the house 110 to zero. Really? Yeah. Oh, good for you. So oh, we did find common ground in the state house. <laughs> Everybody thinks this is important. Though. Good for you for getting it through. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Pete Lucido, your Lansing legislator. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado or any other disaster. Visit ready.gov. Welcome back. I'm Gary Kopp again, and I'm here with your Lansing legislator, Pete Lucido. Uh, Pete, we've been kind of going all over the place here talking about whatever, but I think, you know, one of the things that's on people's minds, and it's certainly not something that's easy to forget, is these roads. Every day, it seems like they're getting worse and worse and worse. Where are we standing on the roads? Um... It's a good thing I was not in the legislature till January of 2015. <laughs> I want to make sure I preempt all of that. <laughs> but now that I'm there, I already saw what Prop 1 did, and here's where we're at. The House passed a 12-bill package. Mm -hmm. It is now at the Senate. The Senate, this just, just yesterday, came back and said, we would like to do an increase, five cents a gallon of gas tax for three years, which is 15 cents at the end of three years, mm -hmm. and addition, have 750 million come out of the general fund. Now that's only a portion of what they said. I haven't seen the full bill package, nor has it been passed. It may be passed as of today, before we're done with the show, or tomorrow, mm -hmm. before the 4th of July. But I wanna make it very clear. I haven't seen the full bill package. If they're talking about an a tax increase just on the gasoline, it's probably going to come out of the Senate. And if it goes exclusively for the roads, I think the people will like that. I'm not a proponent of any tax increase. Right. I still believe in old school, which is this. Printing more money at the federal level just to balance your books and budget is wrong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't serve anybody any, any yeah. good. Yeah, look at Greece. And <laughs> they're going down. <laughs> yep. On top of it, just going ahead and taxing people for the sake of fixing the roads, that's good that we get the roads fixed. Mm -hmm. It's bad because what has our government done? It didn't fiscally budget for this over the last right. 25 right. years. It used the money for other things. Mm -hmm. And we're always, always, always reaching to the people. Once in a while, let's cut the programs. Mm -hmm. Let's cut the programs, man. And let's use the money that we already have existing. Yep. What happens if this 15 cent goes, it passes? What happens to the existing laws that we have in terms of the sales tax that we're paying on gas, uh, the money that's being spent for pension, re pension payments and things like that? Does any of that change? Well, here's the reality. We haven't seen the full package yet okay. of what's gonna change. Mm -hmm. The only talk that we've heard of coming out of the Senate is, is that five cents a year over the next three years, which it comes to 15 cents. Yep. And in addition, rating the general fund 750 million. Mm -hmm. That general fund reminds me of a bank account. You put the money in and you need it for a rainy day, which means for something that we need to really take care of. Yeah. But just taking than, it out, mm -hmm. if we have another crisis, it's not real good yeah. planning. Yeah, plus it's going to the roads, which you figure would be something that you would want to have on a daily basis because we always use the roads. But during Jennifer Granholm's era, she went ahead and said, we're gonna go ahead and increase the, the, the income tax we never seen that come back down. No, no. I'm really worried that they could say that they're gonna sunset something after three years, yeah. but if they go ahead and put another <laughs> moratorium on it and keep it going, saying the roads aren't fixed yet, yeah. how much is a, is a taxpayer yeah. supposed to spend? Uh, a practical person would look at this and say, wait a minute, in three years, are all our roads gonna be perfect and we'll never have to fix them again? What's the final figure? Yeah. I don't know what yeah, the bill is this yet. Is a, this, this thing is gonna wind up keeping going. Yeah. One thing that I want to stress, and this is my own personal thing. I still don't hear the state talking about weight limits on roads. 
Is anything going to happen where we're going to drop these down to federal levels again and instead of spending all this money and we still have these hundred and what is 164,000 pound weight limits on the roads which are still going to tear our roads apart? Are we going to fix that? MDOT engineers believe that the axle weight is correct. That's what they believe. But yeah. yet proof was in the roads itself. Look at all the roads busted Look at the up. Roads. On top of it, you can say that we're on a swamp. You can say anything you want to say that we have freestyle. Ohio, all the other states have it, but they've been maintaining their roads. Mm -hmm. So if you hear, well, there'll be more trucks, there'll be more fuel used, there'll be more workers' comp, the price of goods will be higher. I've heard every argument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the reality? If it means not breaking up our roads to spend billions and billions of dollars, mm -hmm. I'm all for getting the weight back to what every other state is. Yeah. Half of what Michigan says. Half of us, that's for sure. Sure. All right. Getting off the roads again. Um, this Obamacare thing. What's going on with the Supreme Court? I was just on Off the Record with uh, Tim Skubik, who's actually from Macomb County yeah. where he grew up. And Off the Record is a, 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 a uh, political program up in Lansing. And he had me on as a freshman legislator. He wanted to get my spin on it. And there was four people interviewing me this last week. Mm -hmm. about the Obamacare that uh, uh, the, the, the Attorney General, Bill Schuette, took up in regards to saying that, you know, this isn't right. But the 6-3 to three decision of the United States Supreme Court clearly, clearly said that it is constitutional, it is protected, and we're moving forward. This is not something at the state level. I can't address it. No, you can't All it. I can do is put bills and or amendments mm -hmm. into existing bills that may stop the taxpayers bleeding. That's yeah, the first thing. Yeah. Uh, another decision came out of the Supreme Court this last week also on same-sex marriages. Yeah. That's another thing that I can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. The only thing up. we could do is put amendments or we could put bills together as it relates to what the state can govern. But again, this is the Supreme Court of the land, the highest court out there. Mm -hmm. And if you take an oath of office that you're going to support and uphold the Constitution and the laws, this has now become law. Long and long. this is on not just our state. Yeah, as everybody. This is on every state across the, everybody's the talking union. About this. Sure. All right, I think we got to wrap this up, Pete. Again, I'm Gary Kopp. I'm here with your Lansing legislator, Pete Lucido. We'll see you next time.